Hey, thanks for listening to the podcast. Here's our next episode, so I hope you enjoy, and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at InsideLSU. Everybody, welcome into a Thursday edition of the Inside the Tigers podcast, keeping our eyes on the Tigers 24-7. Today we're joined by LSU beat reporter Brody Miller with NOLA.com. You can follow him on Twitter at Brody A. Miller. Brody, thanks for coming today. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, man. So it's almost LSU baseball game day. The Tigers open up at the box tomorrow versus ULM. Uh, Zach Hess will get the nod for a 7 p.m. first pitch. Pulmonary squad is ranked preseason number one in three polls heading into the season. Brody, I know LSU is a championship or bust type program, but... Do you feel that applies more so this year than recent seasons with all they have coming back and, and the hype that some of these new guys are bringing? Yeah, I'd say, you know, I think it's a combination of a lot of factors that makes it 100% true. I mean, at the end of the day, I don't think – I think if they don't win a championship, I don't think it's like pulmonaries in the hot seat or anything like that. But, but yeah, uh, I think the combination of their number one in the country, you have the number one recruiting class in the country, and it's been 10 years since they won one. And, and it's a tricky dynamic because, you know – these last nine years, they've been the most consistent program maybe in all of baseball. You know, three more College World Series appearances, six straight national seeds. I mean, they're always at the top. But I think people are – Palmineri himself, I think, is just getting frustrated with how many close calls and, and all these seasons falling short. So this year, with this much talent, I definitely think there's – a pressure, and a lot of it's internal pressure, but there is a pressure for them to, to definitely win it all. And Omaha is always the expectation at LSU. I mean, it doesn't matter how, even on down years like last year, I mean, Omaha is the expectation. You know, a lot of the players and coaches, they talk about that, how, you know, most schools in the country, you get to Omaha and you're celebrating. When, when LSU gets to Omaha, it's just you're kind of supposed to be there. Now what, you know? Yeah, for me, I'm, I'm excited to see what Saul Garza is made of. Lots of early hype around him. I'm also excited to watch uh, Antoine Duplantis for the final time. God, it feels like he's been in purple and gold forever. For those that don't know, he and Mississippi State outfielder, is it Jake Mangum? Jake. Um, have a shot at the SEC all-time hits record. Duplantis needs 86 hits to earn that honor. Now, you've been covering LSU football all fall, and now you're moving on to baseball. But there's a new storyline that kind of intertwines the two sports. Maurice Hampton is a two-sport athlete, four-star cornerback in LSU's recent signing class. But he's also a projected top pick in the MLB draft. Tell us a little bit about the meeting Ed Orgeron had with Paul Maneri a few weeks ago on dealing with his situation of picking, uh, picking a sport. Yeah, absolutely. So it, it's interesting because, I mean, LSU baseball has had, you know, plenty of overlap guys before, but but they've never had one quite of this magnitude with both sports. And, and you know, Les Miles and Paul Maneri have worked together a good amount on those, but but Ed Ogeron and Paul Maneri had never done it before. So now you have a guy in Maurice Hampton, Mo Hampton, who – who is a you know a top 30 baseball prospect, a potential first round guy, and also a top 150 football player. So I mean that's just rare. And I would say, and what also makes it tricky is baseball is probably his main sport. I mean he's probably he can make a lot more money playing baseball to peers. I think that's more of a safe bet for him. But the way just scholarships work out, football can offer him a full scholarship. Baseball you know doesn't often do that. So. You know, football's the one taking the bigger risk here because they're the one who is supplying basically LSU with a free outfielder because they're the one giving them a scholarship. So they're the one taking on a risk. They're the one who has to accept that, you know, you, he'll miss stuff in the spring because he'll be playing baseball. He'll, you know, he'll have to, you know, commit and bounce back and forth. And also he might go to the MLB draft in, in June. You know, he might be a first-round pick. So there's all these factors that really make it a risk for LSU. But the, the, what came down to it, and we'll get to this meeting in a second, is I think – it was both were so important to Hampton that I think he wouldn't have chose LSU if Ed Ogeron had taken the stance of we only want you playing football. And I think a lot of other schools in the country, from what I've heard, did say that. A lot of schools said, you know, we, we only feel comfortable with you playing football. So I think Ed Ogeron knew that. Paul Maneri knew that. So, you know, it was safety coach Bill Bush's idea, and, they just, and he told Ed Ogeron to do it. And they basically organized a meeting in Ed Ogeron's office that was – you know, pretty much a good portion of the football staff, a good portion of the baseball staff, and they just sat in Ogeron's office with Mo Hampton and just broke down the entire schedule. And the, and the message of the meeting was, you know, the only decision you have to make is what school you have to choose, not what sport you have to play. And I think that is what made the difference with Mo Hampton. LSU was uncertain whether they would sign Mo Hampton or Ray Parker, and Orgeron ends up with signatures from both of them. In terms of the pitching staff, LSU has some dudes to throw out there. Landon Marceau was named preseason freshman of the year by Baseball America. He's a projected Saturday starter as of now. 
What are you hearing about how special this kid can be in his first year in Baton Rouge? He put up some impressive numbers during last week's scrimmage. Yeah, it, it's it's kind of crazy how, you know, Paul Maneri actually has been joking about it, how I think, you know, I think Landon Marceau, Jaden Hill, and um, Cole Henry all would have been good enough to have been clear starters on last year's team, and suddenly you only have room for one of them in the weekend rotation. And, you know, he was saying that Jaden Hill and, and, and Cole Henry and even Chase Costello, they've all been looking good enough to compete for that, that third spot. But then every time they do, Landon Marceau goes out and does something in a scrimmage where you're like, okay, it's not even close. I mean, he's just that good. He'll go... And you know, you talk to pitching coach Alan Dunn. You talk to recruiting coordinator Nolan Kane. You talk to pro scouts. I mean, it's he is one of the more just polished coming out of high school pitchers many of them have seen. He's a guy who you know he's not huge, which might have hurt his draft stock a little. He's not one of those big six four guys throwing ninety eight. He's a he's I think six foot maybe five eleven, but he has three pitches he throws at a plus level, which is incredibly rare for a kid coming out of high school. And he's and he just kind of understands himself. He's mature. He knows how to pitch. As, as simple as that sounds. So I think he's somebody who just knows what he's doing day one. He's somebody who turned down as much as seven figures to come to college, which is kind of a lot. That's crazy for me to wrap my head around. But, I mean, he I, you can make an argument he would have been the best pitcher on last year's team. And he's just the, – the narrative is that he is just that good. And, and obviously we'll see, and, and Alan Dunn will tell you, we have to we have to see how he handles, you know, getting hit in a game and how, how he'll handle a game of struggles. But all in all, this guy's a chance to be, a, you know, one of the great LSU pitchers. Pretty good year for LSU and Destrehan. You got John Emery and Landon Marceau. That's a good point. Yeah. Um, would you say the, if there is one concern for the team, it's there's not a solidified lefty in the rotation? Yeah, it's definitely something I think that's on Palmineri's mind, now in Dunn's mind. I think I don't think concern is the word I would use yet. I mean, we'll see. It's there's a chance it is, but at least what they're saying is, you know, Palmineri told recruiting coordinator Nolan, uh, coordinator Nolan Kane. Just go get the best pitchers. Don't overthink arms. I think in the past they have tried to get left-handed arms, and, and there's some evidence of that. They've, they've tried to bring in some left-handed arms that maybe weren't LSU quality just for the sake of it, and they weren't good, and they didn't succeed here because of that. So I think there's a little bit of, hey, this could be a problem, but at the end of the day I think they, they would take the pitchers they have over that. And we'll see if Easton McMurray's healthier, what his availability is this year, how good he is. He's the only left-hander on the roster, but he's had some minor injury things. But I mean, it's something I, I'll give you a better answer of, I guess, probably when SEC play comes, but it's something worth keeping an eye on for sure. And then finally, obviously LSU fans are familiar with Hess, Watson, Duplantis, the veteran guys. Who out of the new guys do you expect to open some eyes this season? Um, a guy that Tiger fans maybe aren't paying enough attention to. Yeah, it's tricky because there are just so many newcomers that are going to have major roles. I, you know, aside from Marceau, I'd say you know Jaden Hill and Cole Henry are two names you should definitely know. Got two massive pitchers, big bodies with great stuff who throw really hard. But in the on, in the field, I would say the first person to keep an eye on would be Saul Garza. You mentioned him yourself. He's a you know he I think he would be the starting catcher day one if he didn't have a minor knee injury. But he will be the designated hitter. He's already going to be the three or four hitter in the lineup as a newcomer from junior college. He is a big big man who coaches just joke. It's like like uh, one of the coaches actually saying, you know, like players already look up to him just from a sense of that guy. That guy's a man, you know. I mean, he's hitting balls off the off the scoreboard and stuff like that. Him and Brock Mathis both are. I think he's somebody fans will really like because he just has that potential to be a you know one of the better hitters here. Drew Bianco is another one to follow. Son of Ole Miss coach Mike Bianco, currently the front runner for the first base job. You know, I think his defense is a long way to go, but as a hitter, he's just a fun natural hitter that I think fans will really enjoy. Awesome. That's Brody Miller with NOLA.com, the Times picking you, and you can follow him on Twitter at Brody A. Miller. Brody, thanks for coming in, man. Thanks for having me. It was a great time. Thanks. It's the Inside the Tigers podcast, keeping our eyes on the Tigers 24-7.